So, in one of your threads, you you talk about one of your businesses that failed. Yeah. Uh, speakers boot camps. That's right. So, can you explain a little bit on that? So, you know, first, before I tell you a bit about speakers boot camp, the reason I started writing the threads, and if you've noticed, we've converted them to articles now, is because. I think we live in a society where people are, I, I want to say lazy, I don't know if that's the right word, but I feel like information is being pushed to people all the time. People don't bother to look for information anymore. So if you get to know Vosi now, then the little about me that you know is everything you think there is to know about me. You don't bother to go back and go, let me actually get a timeline of this guy's story and see where he started, right? And see how he got to where he is now. Does that make sense? Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, I think that there is a, you know, if you ever watch Usain Bolt running, the minute after you watch Usain Bolt running, the first thing you want to do is go outside and run. Because Usain Bolt makes running look easy. Right? And the, the, the curse of genius is that it makes difficult look easy. But it's genius. If you see Pablo Picasso painting, you want to paint. You understand? If you see Michael Phelps swimming, you want to swim. You see Vusi speaking, you want to speak. But it's my gift, it's my genius, it's who I am. So we started posting these threads because I felt like what I needed to do was to help people understand that like a duck in water, you're just seeing me glide, you're not seeing me kick underneath and you don't see the madness and you don't see the number of times I've failed. And in part because I've also not publicized those failures. Nobody goes out to the world and say, hey look, I failed this test, right? That's not the way we're wired as human beings. So I was like, let me start finding the parts. Let me tell people the parts of the story they don't know. So you asked the question about Speaker's Bootcamp. So this is like back in the day. I, I, I want to say around 2000 and I might get the dates wrong, but probably around 2010, 2011. My uh, accountant at the time was a guy called Vili, really good guy. And Vili said to me, you're making X amount. I think at the time I was doing like 6 million rand a year on speaking. And Vili was like, you know, you're making a decent amount of money on speaking. And he says, you're, you're easily the best speaker there is. He's right, I am. And he was like, what you should do is also teach people how to speak. It'd be a great business. It's who you are. It's what you do. So at first I was really resistant. And it, it took me like probably like six months of him. Every single time he'd see me, he'd go, are you going to do this thing? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. Bro. I'm not interested. And eventually I was like, okay, let me actually give it a try. So we went with the name Speakers Bootcamp. A bootcamp is a place where you go for a very intense uh, type of training over a short space of time. And so we call it Speakers Bootcamp. And um, I went and found four ladies who belong to the South African College of Speech and Drama. And I contracted them in and I was like, I will find the people to be trained. You guys will deliver the training. I think one of the things people don't know about me is that I'm a classically trained public speaker. So comparing me to another speaker is a bit like comparing a classical pianist to a person that can play the piano. Those are not the same things. Comparing me to another speaker is a bit like comparing Jet Li to someone that just goes to the dojo. Not the same things. Comparing me to another speaker is like comparing Flex Wheeler or Sean Roden or Ronnie Coleman to a person that goes to the gym. There is a big difference between being an eight time Mr. Olympia and having a gym membership. And what happens when you are classically trained at something is it becomes you and you own it and you live it, right? What people are not aware of is that I worked with people who train you in speech for 15 years of my life before you met me. Before I broke out into the public scene and I was known by everybody, 15 years I was training as a professional public speaker, right? In fact, to this day, I still have my training. And so the people who trained me to be who I am are the people I went to. In part, <clears throat> in part I think the reason uh, Speakers Bootcamp failed was because when we were signing people onto Speakers Bootcamp, they wanted to be trained by Vosi. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and it's a it's a it's a very interesting um, mindset people need to get to. If you want to be the best golfer, you don't need to be trained by Tiger Woods. You need to be trained by the person that trained Tiger Woods. If you want to be a great soccer player for Man United, you don't need to play with Rooney. You need to be coached by Alex Ferguson. And we have a personality cult obsession in the world today where people want to be trained by you. They don't realize that there is a system that you know that made you you. And so if I really want to be as good as you, I don't need to be trained by you because you'll teach me some parts of what you know, but not everything. What I want is to access to the system that you have, right? So I went and found these ladies who have in effect designed the system that I was trained in. And we went out and we looked for people. We had a beautiful launch at Melrose Arch. I'll never forget. Beautiful launch at Melrose Arch, at the venue at Melrose Arch, right at the, at the top terrace. And we had the, the launch there. And there were media people in the room. There was press in the room. I partnered with Remy Martin, the alcohol brand, so I could cover some of the costs. I was, I was, like, I was thinking like an entrepreneur. I was being frugal, right? So I got the, the logic. And then we started doing the training, and some interesting things happened. The first was everybody who was in media wanted to be trained but didn't want to pay for it. So all the people who had like TV shows and radio shows, they were like, please train me. Oh, and by the way, I'll pay you with some exposure. And I remember going, you, you know, exposure won't pay my rent. So no. And the people who were not in media who wanted to be trained wanted to be trained by Vusi. And I was like, yeah, but I'm building my own speaking life and my own speaking career. Do you want to be trained by Vusi or do you want to be trained to speak? Because those are not the same things. So anyway, so we kind of do it. We had our first cohort of people. We took in the cohort. And consistently the feedback and complaint I was getting from the professional trainers I'd gotten to train these guys was, you know, the training is good, but these people want to be trained by you. And, um, and what's interesting is Vidi and I had done, as all, all business people do, you do these projections, you come up with numbers about how much money you're going to make. And who were like, we can do 12 million in the first year. We're going to make good, good money, right? Yeah, 12 million in the first year, 45% gross margin, 35% net margins, good business. And, you know, you just get to the end of the first cohort and you ask yourself, do I want the consistent fight of teaching people who want to be taught by me rather than to learn my system? And the answer was just a flat no. So in that first cohort, this is a true story, we ended up, I think we had about 11 or 12 people who signed up to pay, who signed the contracts to pay. One paid. Mm. And the one that paid of a six of a six month course paid for three months. And something interesting is in our psychology was the number of people who are like, ah, oh, but we as Moskunja, Right? Because I think we also live in this culture where people don't take startups seriously. So you'll never go to F and B and go buy me a house in Zonhafa. Right? But you'll go to a small business person and go because we have this culture of not taking each other seriously as black people and worse not taking our businesses seriously as black entrepreneurs um, and I use black because everybody that said that the one person who paid by the way was non-black every other person who was like ah, or came up with excuses were, was always around oh yeah, right what was fascinating is those people show up, they show up for the training, they attend the training, you know, but when it comes to doing the work, they don't want to do the work. Behind it, and I didn't share this in the thread, but actually behind it, what I was doing was I wanted to train and represent the next batch of Vussies. Because I was, I looked at, you know, Jay-Z's model with Def Jam and I was like, so Jay-Z went from being the hip hop artist to owning a record label. You know, Michael Jackson went from being the performer to owning, you know, uh, the, the, the masters to the Beatles music. So I realized that wealth wasn't owning the asset, not working for the asset. Hmm. So what I was doing was I was building the business to represent speakers. So I would train you. And then at the end of the training, if you wanted representation, I'd represent you. So I've got about 11 or 12 people signed on. Six of them say they want to be professional speakers. 
I booked a professional photographer. We booked professional studios. We went to the studio, we shot professional pictures. We did professional video work. I had a graphic designer come in and design their one pages, their profile, their keynotes. I had a copywriter write the full copy. And I had a digital company in Cape Town design the pages on the internet for them to be found. I invested easily over a quarter million rand, but those people didn't pay me one cent for the training. Yeah. And they were happy to take the work. People love, you know, I see some of them today on social media, they're still using those professional pictures taken by that photographer on their profiles. They never paid for it. Yeah. And um, so we, anyway, we get to like the end of the, you know, it's like a five, six month period and Vili says to me, you know, I can see stuff happening. This is what I call the activity versus revenue complex. Entrepreneurs love activity. You want to see things happen. You want to see your people working, you want to see the phone ringing. Yeah. But activity has to equal revenue and revenue has to equal money in the bank. And if that system is broken, there's going to be a problem with, um, there's going to be a problem with the sustainability of the business. So anyway, I ended up calling it. I was like, this is not going to work. Um, and I just got out of that business. And what happened was, as the minute I said, we're not taking on the next cohort, people then were coming back and going, oh, can I come and join? Can you also train me? Because the people I'd been training, now we're seeing the benefits. I mean, one of them I remember was working for one of the large insurance firm. Two of them were working for a bank. You know, like they were seeing the benefits and they were telling people, oh, I'm attending this training. Amazing training. And so they were telling their friends and their friends were going, can you also do the same for me? And the hardest call I ever had to make was not to take the next batch. And I just went, nope. We came up with a list of companies we could refer them to. The Voice Clinic, which, by the way, is an incredible institution, great business. Some of them were referred to Toastmasters. But I had this, uh, this like, uh, it was like a seminal conversation. So Patty, who I worked with and who was one of the trainers, uh, went and had lunch with Patty at her house. And Patty is like a five foot two um, seasoned. She wouldn't like me saying old. She's like a seasoned Jewish woman. But I, I love Patty. I've known Patty for close on two decades. And what I love about Patty is her ability to call out bullshit. Mm. She doesn't, especially with me, she doesn't beat around the bush. We've had the most incredible relationship because she has honored me with her truth. So anyway, I, I go to see Patty I'm sitting in her house and, you know, she's got her 15,000 cats running around <laughs> everywhere. And Patty's house is, is this beautiful, like oriental Japanese style decor. Um, but there are books everywhere. I think she must have over 5,000 books in her home. There's not a corner or a crevice of the house you can go to where there's not a book in Patty's house. And she's read all of them. She's also into Buddha. So there are like 5,000 Buddhist figures. A little one, a small one, a big one. It's just like, so anyway, I want you to picture the scene. We're sitting in this beautiful oriental house, books everywhere, Buddhas everywhere, 1970s furniture. And Patty looks at me, she says, Nah, Lucy, my boy. She says, you're going to have a problem, she says. You're trying to teach people a craft that you have not tested your own limits of. Yeah. So she was like, either you're going to be a teacher or you're going to be a practitioner. Then she said to me, take it from a teacher, because she was one. You can't be both. If you want to practice and be in the, in the skill and in the craft, do that. But then get out of this teaching thing because it's going to drain you. It's going to take your time, creativity, energy, resources. But this is where you want to be. So that's how I called it. When we made the decision to close Speakers Bootcamp, it was the most quiet exit I've ever made in my life. We said nothing. <laughs> not a post, not a tweet, not an email, not a dollar law nothing i just kept quiet and i let it fizzle away so it, what was interesting was when i wrote the thread I was watching the number of people who were going i remember speakers boot camp oh so that's what happened right yeah. you know today like if i were to run the numbers i probably lost you know throughout the whole exercise if i adjust for my time easily a million rand so if i look at the amount of time i invested in it the amount of money, by the way, because every time they went to a training session, I had to pay the trainers. So Tandanani is going to a training session. 
I'm paying for Tanda Nani to go to the training session with the trainer. I'm paying for Tanda Nani's pictures done by a professional photographer, the studio, the videography, the website, and Tanda Nani hasn't paid me. If I were to go just for how much time and money that cost me, easily a million rand. But I made the decision, wash my hands, walk away. And that's how that business failed.